Hey guys, it's me, Zellin. So, this is probably going to be part one of a couple for answering of the questions. Um, I'm going to try to go get through them as quickly as possible. If you if I haven't answered your questions as in-depthly as you might want me to, please feel free to leave a comment below. Um, and I will gladly go through it um, in more detail. But, you know, I don't want it to be a four-part video series on answering questions. Because as you guys know, I do talk a little too much. So let's get right on in there and uh, answer the first question. The first question is from Moon Gatherer, and she asks, if you could meet a celebrity from the mu music world, who would it be? And it's a toss-up between um, Meatloaf and um, Lemmy. Lemmy, just because he seems like a really cool guy, I like his music, and he, you know, I'd love to go have a beer with him, even though I don't drink beer, but you know what I mean. And Meatloaf, because, you know, musically speaking, he's sort of like the father figure for me. And when when I saw him live in concert, he just seemed like a really cool, down-to-earth guy. I And, you know, I just would love to, sh to shoot the shit with him. He seems interesting. So, I hope that answers it. Um, the next question here is from Per27. And she asks, how did you get started or interested in the craft? And this is a very... <laughs> complex answer that I have. I've sort of always been interested, um, mainly because the occult has always been around. Um, I've had friends of the family um, tell me and other people that, you know, when I was little, I, like, three, two and a half, three years old, talking about the Fae and talking about seeing spirits and talking about, um, see orbs and stuff like that. Um, I remember, you know, people would ask, oh, is it just because of the movies you've read and it's like, or movies you've watched and it's like, no, not really, because I just, I would describe them completely differently. And I was never a kid that had, like, imaginary friends that, that my parents would just hawk it off on, um, because these things weren't imaginary as, as far as I was concerned at the time. Um, unfortunately, as I've gotten older, I've kind of closed that side off, um, and I am currently working to reopen it, just because I want to experience that again. It's never exactly gone away, it's just definitely quieted down. Um, but yeah, the, my, uh, my parents, my grandparents on my dad's side of the family, um, have told me that, um, that side of the family does see things, and it's not in a schizophrenic kind of way, it's like, you know, they were spiritual people, and they saw spirits and stuff, um, and one of my, she's actually a second cousin, technically, but she's an aunt for all other purposes, um, she is the quote-unquote witch of the family, and she's the one that, you know, the family goes to if they need a, re a tarot reading, or all that, and she, she practices a very Italian form of, um, folk ma magic, but, and they don't, I'm, I'm the black sheep of the family, like, I, I'm the one that's been t very much ostracized, where she's not, um, namely, I think because she's a twin, I think the reason, that's the reason why they, they kind of accepted her for it, was because she's a twin, and, and, Twins are supposed to be the ones to do that stuff. But, you know, whatever. Um, so yeah, I've always, uh, it's always been around. I mean, I remember being 12, 13 years old and my parents offering to, to get me, you know, books like Teen Witch and, and my mom buying me self-help crap books and stuff like that when I was, you know, 11, 12 years old. So, and it was like, you know, about like opening your chakras and stuff. And at that point in time, I, 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 it wasn't that I didn't believe it, but I did think it was like, why are my parents doing this? So, um, when I did finally get interested in Wicca and in paganism for myself and get more serious into it and, and actually started studying, I was probably, I was probably between, I want to say between 14 and 16 years old, somewhere in there. And that's when I got my first, this is one of the first books I bought, which is A Charmed Life. But the first book that I read, I had taken out of the library um, 
in my town, and they were um, The Law Enforcement Guide to Wicca and Witchcraft by Kier Kahulan, who at the time was a Vancouver police officer, and Nocturnal Witchcraft, um, which people have done a lot of reviews on. And shortly after getting uh, sorry, getting a copy of Noc like reading a copy of Nocturnal Witchcraft, I started doing a lot of meditation and stuff, and that's sort of kind of what got me into it. This was the first book that I actually bought for myself. I bought this one, and at the same time, I bought Sacred Sexuality of Ancient Egypt, and was like I devoured both of these. I, I recall actually carrying this around with me in my backpack. Uh, backpack trying to say rucksack and backpack at the same time, backpack. Anyway, my backpack for probably about two years. Uh, this is the second copy because it doesn't have the highlighting and all that that the, the original one has. But it's a good book. I do suggest you guys read it. So I sort of always have, but I officially started when I was probably about, I read for probably about a year, so I was probably about 16 when I did my self-dedication the first time. Um, yeah, I want to say 16. What do I want to say? I don't know. I don't have any of my, my journals from then. Otherwise, I would have had, I would, I would have been able to tell you the date. But I don't have any of those, so, sorry. Right. Um, okay, I just want to check my time really quick. Alright. Um, the next question is, how do you personally choose which correspondences you use when creating a spell. And this is by Witchy Lady 13. Um, and personally, it really depends on the spell. But, you know, for example, if, if I wanted to do a money spell, um, no matter what kind of money spell, like if I want to do a mojo or a green green bag, or if I want to do a candle spell, if I want to do an incense spell, or if I wanted to do a jar, it would definitely have cinnamon in it. It would probably definitely have allspice or, um, in it, um, like, just for those examples, but, you know, if I didn't have a green cloth, I'd use whatever cloth I could get, usually a blue or a red, would be mine, because they're both protective, at least for me, but to me, blue is for healing, protect, and protection, um, mainly with, especially with children, whereas I know for other people, blue is like purity and stuff, and it's like, okay. And for me, red is like a big protector. It's like part of the warrior's idea. Um, like the strength of youth and things like that. And, and blood. And, you know, I know a lot of people that are like, oh, red lust. And it's like, what? You need blood lust? You don't want sexy lust with, with red. You know. But, again, I, so I do have my own personal charts. Um, which I do plan on rewriting because they're really messy you be messy. So, yeah. It's a lot of gut instinct in the long run on how I choose. It's a lot of gut I instinct. Um, and of course I have read, you know, books that have correspondence table and I do take it all into consideration. But it's a lot of gut instinct. Okay. So, let me just have a look here. Um, we're at eight minutes. I'm going to cut this off as part one and then I'm going to do the rest of the questions in part two. Because the next question here, I have a feeling I will ramble for a while, and I probably will run out of time. So, look for part two, and uh, see you guys in a bit.